Dr. Lieber here to talk about descriptors. This is one of the sort of elusive parts of deduce and, and indeed a unique architectural feature in deduce that allows you to very easily bring in quantitative and demographic types of data, integrate them with the things you do with your qualitative data, and then very nimbly use all of these data points in your analysis. So let's get a few terms out of the way. What we refer to in deduce as a descriptor set, you could think of as analogous to an Excel spreadsheet where you have variables or fields, which are your column headers, and rows of information or descriptors themselves. So in deduce, refer to the entire package as a set. And you can have multiple sets of descriptors in deduce. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So what does this look like in deduce? Let me jump to my descriptor workspace here. And you can see that I have two sets defined, one called community characteristics, one called participant demographics. In the participant demographics set, we have a number of fields or variables, and they're all listed here, child, gender, ethnicity, phase, and so forth. Over to the right, we have the descriptors themselves. So you can see the same as it was in our Excel spreadsheet. We have our column headers with our field names, and then the rows of information. Each of these we call a descriptor. I can pop this one open, and we can look at everything that we know about this particular participant. All right, now that the terms are out of the way, let's look at setting up descriptor information manually in deduce. First thing I'm gonna do is create a new set. I'm gonna go to my descriptor sets panel here, hit the plus sign, type in my new name, and submit that. Now we have a new set, our new Excel spreadsheet, but everything's blank. Next thing we need to do is define our fields. I'm gonna hit the plus sign in the set fields panel, and start typing the name for a new field. I'm going to start with ID because it's always a great idea to have a unique identifier for every case because we're going to be mapping this information to the qualitative data that we're bringing in. Let's make this a number type field. I have four types that I can set my fields. Text, number, date, time, and option list or categorical. We'll set that as a number and submit it. Bam! Look, we have the ID column all set to receive information. Let's create just a couple more. Call this one gender. We're going to leave this as an option list, so I need to add what are going to be the valid values. I'm going to say you can be a male or you can be a female. Submit that. So we'll add one more type. Let's make it a text field, and we'll call it name. And I should point out that if I put a description in here, that's going to show up as a smart tip later on when I'm floating over it. We'll make this a text type field and submit that. All right, there we go. We've got our fields set. Now the only thing that we're missing are the data themselves. So I'm gonna go over here to the descriptors in this particular set, hit the plus sign there, and start setting the values. Participant number one is male. His name is Eli. Participant number two, female. Call her Teresa. So you can see now I'm bringing in the data into that particular set based on the fields that I've defined. So that's the manual process. And at any time, I can add new fields to my sets. I can add new descriptors to my sets as I bring new participants into my study. But oftentimes, these data are already being managed in other software, commonly in Excel, or perhaps you've got the data in a statistical software package like SAS or SPSS. If so, it's a whole lot easier to just import them directly. So let's see what that looks like. So there are two ways to import descriptor information. One is to import the definitions and the data separately. So let's look at that. I'm going to create another new set here. We'll call this one import, starting with my blank slate again. Now down here in the set fields panel, instead of hitting the plus sign to manually add them, so I'm going to click on this import fields icon in the set fields panel, and I'm going to be prompted to find an Excel spreadsheet where I've set up those definitions. Find that file. First thing you get is an error check to take a look at the fields you've defined by title, descriptions, what type they are, and if an option list, what are the valid values. Everything looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and just click Next. Import to the selected set that I've titled Import and bring those definitions in. Next thing I'm going to want to do is bring in the data. I'm going to go to the Descriptors and Set panel, hit the Import Descriptor Data icon, prompted to find the file that contains my data import that. I've got a little error check. Looks like I've got uh, Chinese for one case where that's not defined as a valid value and, and a missing data point. We can go ahead and proceed and 
accept that as missing data and bam descriptive data are all in ready for use a whole lot easier than creating a manually if you've got these data stored elsewhere quick look at some of the features that we have in our descriptor workspace I want to focus on what I'm viewing and what I'm filtering so we've dealt with our sets and fields issues so I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this panel but I'm gonna open up my columns and filters panel what's activated in my columns panel on the upper left here are just simply the columns that are in view so I'm gonna go ahead and clean things up just a little bit uncheck these bring in just an ID and name so we know what our cases look like and then say I want to filter down to a subset of descriptors that meet certain criteria so let's go ahead and choose general home language and mother's work status you can see as I activate these columns we get folders down here in this filtering panel in the lower left so I'm going to go ahead and open up the home language folder select English and Spanish and then let's say mom's work status part-time only so now I've narrowed my list of descriptors down to just those that meet these particular criteria so this is just a quick way of narrowing down your descriptors to a subset that you might want to work with for some particular reason so let me clean this puppy out so we can get ready for another import so another way to import those data is directly from our home dashboard I'm going to click the import data icon in this upper left panel select spreadsheet and I'll go and find that same file that contained all the data submit that BAM data are in let's take a look at our descriptor workspace to see what happened here we've got a new imported set fields defined and all the data points this particular import was designed for our survey importer and you can learn about that in the survey importer video huge time saver if you're collecting data through services like SurveyMonkey or Qualtrics so I'm going to clean out these superfluous sets here alright so let's talk about the use of multiple descriptor sets the idea of multiple descriptor sets allows us to do vertical types of analysis so for example in this study we have participant characteristics information about the families that participated in this study and we also have another set called community characteristics and so this is an entirely independent set of variables that distinguishes one neighborhood from another so families are nested in neighborhoods and we might want to ask questions that cross these levels of analysis so for example is there some difference between families that speak Spanish at home as a function of population density so the way that we make use of descriptor sets so we're importing family level information through the interviews that we collected we're gonna link it both to a family characteristic and a community characteristic so real quickly let me show you what that looks like and it'll segue into a brief discussion of dynamic descriptors alright so I go back home click the plus sign in my media panel bring in a document here I'm in document view and as you may already be aware I've got my descriptor button right here I'm gonna go ahead and click on that takes me to my descriptor pop-up I'm gonna say hey this document comes from a person who lives in this particular neighborhood linked up there and I'm gonna to go to the participant family say it belongs to this particular family so what's popping up here now is a prompt to set the value for a dynamic descriptor dynamic descriptors are designed to allow you to track chronological change if you're doing a longitudinal study this particular study was an experiment and families were interviewed both prior to and following an intervention I'm gonna say that this was a post intervention interview and I'm gonna submit that so I close this pop-up I can see this particular document is linked to two descriptors one descriptor from each set so now a real quick look at setting up dynamic descriptors I go back to my descriptor workspace I want to add a new field here hit the plus sign to add the field call it time I'm gonna leave this as an option list as time one or time two I need to set this as a dynamic field by checking this box submit that so let's back out to our home dashboard grab that document that I just brought in click on descriptors and I can go to edit you're only gonna see this edit icon if dynamic descriptors are set pop that open and now you can see our new dynamic descriptor is ready to be used so the last thing to talk about descriptors is adding new cases once a descriptor set is already set up 
One way to do that is manually. I can go to my descriptors and set panel, hit the plus sign, and I'm prompted to set the values for each of the fields. Go ahead and submit that. But what if I have these data collected in Excel again, and I want to simply merge that information together? We can do that by exporting the current descriptor set, adding the new cases, and then re-importing it. So I'm going to go to my export descriptor data icon, click on that. So let's take a look and see what that file looks like. I'll just grab it over here in Excel. Here we go. The important thing to be aware of here is that there's a new column that's been added to this file. It's titled deduce ID. That's the key that deduce uses to associate that set of descriptor information with any of the documents that it's linked to. So you don't want to mess with that. I'm going to just copy all my other case information from another file, paste it in here, save that. Let's go see what the re-import looks like. So I'm going to go back to my descriptor workspace, click on import, find that file. So like I had a bunch of missing data here, not a problem. Go ahead and submit. And I get a warning that the sheet contains a deduce ID column and any information that's contained in those particular rows is simply going to be updated. Do we want to proceed? Yes, we do. So we've now added all those descriptors to our descriptor set. All right, well, I think that covers descriptors pretty thoroughly. Hope this gets you on your way. We've also done a blog series on the use of descriptors. That might be helpful to you as well. I'm sure you could find that with a quick search. And we certainly hope you'll be using descriptor data to allow you to really capitalize on the mixed methods features in Deduce. Happy deducing all.